Hey, I'm Chip Foos here at Foos Design. Today, we're gonna to discuss the fifth generation Corvette. You know, if you're looking for a sports car, the bargain that you can get a C5 Corvette for is amazing. Between 10 and $20,000, if you wanna get yourself this sports car and just go out and enjoy it, you can get a real nice car. Now, if you're a hot rodder and you're looking for all the mechanicals, for 10 to 20,000, you can get the state of the art at the time that that was being built and put it in your hot rod. It's whether you want the car or just the mechanicals, that's a steal. You know, I'm looking at pictures of this fifth generation Corvette and you know, I've never been a huge fan of the car itself. Fun to drive, but aesthetically and as a designer, to me, the car just looks soft. It's doughy, it's round and, and kind of looks lazy in design. You know, compared to today where you've got some sharp edges and some aggressive design, the C5 is a very round, heavy handed looking design. But uh, you know, still a great performer. Like I say, you could use all the mechanicals and build something really cool. Or if I were gonna take one of these cars, I would probably use graphics to try and break it up and do something, two-tone it or something, to try and make it look a little more aggressive. Now I wouldn't get a real bold two-tone, I would just do subtle colors and uh, you know, have some fun with it. But uh, a great stance and wheels will make any car look good and it'll actually help this car a lot. I would probably also get rid of the mirrors and do something different. That mirror just looks like it's about three times as large as it needs to be. And uh, maybe do some kind of a sport mirror on it or just cut it up, get rid of the door handles and make it into a hot rod. You know, it doesn't matter what you've got. You can, you can change it and play around with it and have some fun, but make it your own car. Here, I'll, I'll do a little sketch of one and uh, maybe show you what I'm thinking. While I'm sketching here, I'm thinking about the designers that had to build this car for General Motors back when they first did it. And, you know, they're faced with a lot of uh, hand-holding when they're designing a car. And what I mean by that is back in the 60s, the designers really had the final say in what the cars looked like. Other than, you know, the engineers would come in and say, well, that bumper, you know, if we make it uh, two inches too wide, it's going to be a lot easier to put on the car. So designers had their hands tied where they couldn't do all the things that they wanted to do. But you also have to look at what were the trends and what was happening at that time. So the round soft shapes, that's what was happening in the uh, late 90s when this car was done. Today, it's sharp edges, it's aggressive. This is a very soft design, but uh, let's see what we can do with uh, just a couple quick sketches here and try and have some fun with it. I think it was... Uh, Callaway that did the really cool windshield and soft door and I'm gonna I'm gonna sketch that up on this car also, but I'm gonna play with a couple of uh, Roll bars behind that The seating as well. So I'm gonna design it as a uh, as a convertible here just for grins The other thing, I think that that rear end of the car looks really heavy. So if I could restyle it a little bit, I would probably pull it down in the back and maybe run a small wing into the back or even two wings that kind of play with that uh, double roll bar that we have here. And then I'm gonna get a little more aggressive with the back end of the car and bring it up a little bit, lighten it up. One of the benefits of playing around with this back end, it's just gonna make the overhang look lighter. It's still as long as it was, but it's gonna look lighter just by bringing it up a little bit and actually giving a little more shape into the back. Now I'll keep that front opening that they have. 
but I think I'm going to play around and do something that, that works off of like a 63 Corvette. Some of the details from that. Yeah, that, the little gill that they had in the front of the car really broke up the body side. But I think it was a 64, 65. They actually had three angled ones. I'm going to bring that detail into this car to get a little more aggressive. I've just been asked what I'm drawing with, and this is a quality in sweets pen. <laughs> so, would have been in there when I stayed there. I don't know when I stayed there, but uh, yep. Whatever I can find, but I, I like to sketch in a ballpoint pen. Pencil, you get pencil all over your hand and you end up smearing it. And I'm rubbing my hand all over this paper, so a ballpoint pen works for me. And then what I'll end up doing when I get something that I'm starting to like, I'll do an overlay and uh, start playing with it there. The other thing I'm going to play around with is this uh, front bumper and this this whole detail here. It looks very simple. I think if we were to do a stainless wire mesh behind that opening, it might make it look a little more elegant. If you're confused by the word stance of the vehicle, what I mean by that is the ride height. The reason I say to find the stance that you like is I'm a huge fan of building a car where it looks great and that's where it actually performs. You don't have to leave a show and lift your vehicle so you can actually drive home and completely change the look. Build it where it looks cool and it works right. I just did a couple uh, loose sketches. Now I'm gonna overlay this and have a little fun with it. What I'm doing right now is indicating the wheels and then I'm gonna make sure that the body fits the wheels because the loose sketch that I did were just big ovals and the wheel wheels that I had sketched were huge. So I'm gonna now proportion them so that they look right with what I'm doing with the rest of the car. Now, if I were to build this vehicle, you know, we're working with a composite body already. So what I would do is I would add clay model to this, cut away what you don't need, add clay to it and model exactly what I would want, pull some molds off of that and build a new fiberglass body. That's the simplest way to build it. Um, it actually would be a lot of fun. But the one thing with a Corvette is it's accepted to be a fiberglass car because that's what they have all been. So you wouldn't have to go through all the effort to build a complete steel body and spend all of that money. Fiberglass is much more cost effective to build a really cool custom. Now I was just asked if cars always look better when they're chopped. And uh, I would have to say no. I have seen a lot of cars that have been chopped that have actually destroyed the car. It's how they're chopped that can either make them look better or worse. And uh, you know, a lot of people think, you know, if you're going to, if you're going to chop it, more is better. I don't necessarily think so. It's how you proportion it. Because a lot of times you can cut the top of a car where you think, oh, that looks really cool. You get it all finished, you walk back. Now the body just looks really, really heavy and the top looks small. 
You need to proportion it so that it doesn't have that feeling. There's a lot of Mercs out there that are really cut really low and the bodies just look heavy. Look at Sam Barris who chopped the very first one. That car is beautifully proportioned. It's the green one that was restored by uh, Roy Brizio Street Rods up in San Francisco. But uh, Sam Barris, the brother of George Barris, he's the one that originally did that. Sam unfortunately passed away and uh, George was the remaining one that uh, stayed in the family and ran the business and uh, he's the one that most people remember. You know, it's interesting, I was just asked if there's certain rules that I would follow or that I've learned in design work that I would follow when I'm, when I'm developing something like this. And the only rule that I like to follow is don't set any rules because that might stop you from looking at something that might work. And uh, I like to just play around. I'll do, I'll do 40 sketches like this before I'll settle on something. Right now, because of time, I'm just doing one quick sketch and we're gonna live with it. But uh, you know, if I were designing this for a customer, I would tell them, let me get about, you know, I'll have a handful of sketches that I'll bring back and, and we'll get together and start figuring out what we're gonna build for somebody. But uh, the greatest thing about it is there are no rules in customizing a car. You get to build what you want. I'm gonna throw a little color in this. And uh, typically when I throw color on something, I start with a real pale blue because it's reflecting all the sky tone if this car were outside. So I'll start with a pale blue and just kind of indicate where we're reflecting sky tone onto all of the reflective surfaces, anything that's shiny. When you ask if I have a color in mind whenever I design or build a car, uh, I don't necessarily have a color right off the bat. Um, as we're designing and as I'm building, I start to see the car in different colors. And before we actually finish the car, I'll know exactly what that car wants to be. I'm gonna do this car in a warm champagne silver color. It's just a color that I really like and it always works to me for a uh, concept type car look. And that's basically what we're doing here is trying to come up with a concept for a C4 or a C5 Corvette. So I'm gonna play around with something that I think almost always works. Now this will be a fairly loose sketch because we don't have a whole lot of time, but at least you'll get the idea of what I'm thinking. As I told you, I start with the uh, blues to indicate the reflection of a sky tone under those reflective surfaces. Then I go with a warm color to reflect anything that's coming from the ground so things will look shiny. But being that this is also a champagne color, I went ahead and brought a lot of that reflective color all the way up through the body. And I'm gonna put some of that color down in the ground to indicate that that's where it's coming from. And I'll do the same thing with the sky tone.
need that quality end pin. This is where I'm doing a two-tone. So I'm making the top of the car darker. So what I'm doing right now is I'm indicating where I would actually two-tone this body. Like I said, this body is really round. By putting this two-tone color in, I'm trying to get a little more aggressive design and keep one really beautiful flowing line through the top of that body, but breaking up I'm not going black, but I would have this beautiful champagne color and then something that's in a warm kind of charcoaly color next to it. There's a cool gray one right there. As I'm sketching, I'm using the marker as the tool to design and you know, maybe I wanted a lighter color, but I'm bringing this in and I'm making that two-tone a little more subtle color. So I'm bringing a little bit darker body color into it. And then that same two-tone color from the top will come down and I'm gonna do the bottom graphic or the bottom, almost like a ground effect in that same tone again. But, uh, you know, I have an idea in my head of what I wanna design. And as I'm drawing, sometimes it grows and starts to change. This isn't going off too far from what I had originally thought, but uh, if I were to draw it again, I have ideas in my head now of what I would change. Now I get asked all the time whether I'm a Ford or Chevy or Chrysler guy? And my answer is yes. I'm all of them. You know, in life I have chosen one woman to spend the rest of my life with, but I wanna get my hands on every car I can. You know, it's interesting to me that uh, I've been asked to build copies of cars that I've built for other customers before. And once I've built it once, I'm not interested in building it again. Um, you know, if somebody wants a car, let's build your car, not somebody else's that you want to drive. Let's build something that when they see it, they know it's yours. And, uh, you know, I've done movies for, or cars for movies. And it's interesting, like I was involved with Gone in 60 Seconds and we built Eleanor just to be a movie car. And there have been thousands of them copied. And it's, uh, it's very flattering that guys want that car. But in my mind, if I were gonna build a car, I wanna build something that is mine, not something that I saw in a movie. Let's build something better than that. I've been asked what I thought of uh, GM coming out with the mid-engine Corvette. They've been talking about it forever. And uh, I think it's great that they're doing it because Ford's doing it with the GT and they need something that's gonna be competitive with that. And the Corvette is that high performance brand that they can use to make that car. And uh, I'm excited to see it. It's gonna be interesting uh, how they do it and how it's accepted. But I personally think it'll be accepted well because it's already being accepted well in other brands.
as I'm doing this sketch, I'm not thinking about what is the history of the Corvette. I'm just trying to simply build something that I think would be a cool custom without looking like it is a custom. Everything I design, I try to make look like uh, this could have been built at the factory. You know, you could buy one of these cars and put some giant flares on it and uh, a big hood scoop that you would typically see as a hot rod or a custom. Some really cool big wide wheels underneath these big fenders. But everybody that looks at that car says, wow, look at the fender flares and look at that hood scoop. They know exactly what you did to it. When I build a car, I don't want people to know exactly what I wanted or what I did to it. I want them to discover it. So as they're looking at it, they start to discover, oh, look, they did this and they did this. The simplest way for that to happen is if it were parked next to a stock one. That doesn't always happen. They're just going to walk up and think, wow, what is this? And then they'll figure it out. Yeah, when it comes to the wheels on this, I'm just indicating them as if, uh, you know, what they would look like if the car was moving, because that's not the focal point right now. I'm focusing on the body. If I were designing the wheels for this car, I might spend, you know, six hours just playing around with different ideas until I get something that I'm happy with. So I'm just, like I say, just indicating here. So it's just something that's inspirational and kind of fun. I have an idea of what I would do, some type of a... Uh, you know, almost a mesh looking wheel. So it looked uh, um, a little more performancey and uh, almost European. Come back in with some different colors and some highlights here. this to look like you've got a polished lip on the wheel so I'm gonna make that look a little bluer throw some highlights on here and I think we about got it and grab an orange indicate the uh, front driving lights This is just going to indicate where the sun might hit it. Basically it. All right. Starting out with the soft round bodied Corvette, what I wanted to do was try and give it a little angular design. So by giving it a two tone and having some type of, you know, not a real bold color change, but a subtle color change with a graphic 
I actually tightened up the, uh, the form of the body there, but then brought in some retro Corvette, the three scoops in the front fender, but also tied it into the rear fender, added a little bit of, uh, shall we say, ground effects to the car, cool set of wheels, more of a sport mirror, and then I know Callaway actually did kind of a wraparound windshield back in the day. I did the same thing on my uh, 2002 Thunderbird called the Speedbird. I thought it'd be neat to add that detail with the headrest, and then because there's two headrests, also the rear, double up the rear wing, and uh, just have some fun with it. But uh, for about ten dollars to $20,000, you can buy something that you can modify and make something really fun and something that's not recognizable is, you know, people aren't going to walk up and know exactly what you did. They're just going to say, wow, that's a cool car. But uh, the mechanicals are all there. You just got to have some fun with the body.